Good evening, wherever you may be, and welcome to our evening prayer on this Sunday, the 18th day of October. I did a little counting, and I come up with the 208th day that I have done one of these evening prayer services for you. On this day, it is uh, most importantly, the day that we remember is to honor St. Luke the Evangelist. Now, my Anglican Church wall calendar and my pocket calendar say that it's to be honored tomorrow, and the, the church has accepted it as a movable feast and wanted to keep Sunday as Sunday, but uh, this is the official day of it, and since I'm doing evening prayer, I'm honoring it on this day. And I don't too, feel too uh, guilty about that, because this morning, our primate, Archbishop Linda, was in Sault Ste. Marie at St. Luke's Cathedral, helping them to honor their parish name day, St. Luke's Day, and also the 125th anniversary of uh, the cathedral. Uh, as one who had the opportunity to preach in St. Luke's Cathedral several times and was in 1999 named a canon of that cathedral, I have a special warm spot. I understand that, uh, that her homily today was very strong and very prophetic and an important word for the church in our time. On a little lighter note, today is Chocolate Cupcake Day. I mean, cake is good, cupcakes are better, and if it's chocolate with a nice thick chocolate icing, you're talking about really good product. So for you cupcake lovers, this is Chocolate Cupcake today, Day today. A little more seriously now, this is also Developmental Language Disorder Awareness Day. Uh, it's uh, too many children have speaking difficulties, speech defects of one sort or another, and I think this is a special day to give thanks to the speech and language therapists who work diligently to improve children's speech abilities, especially in their younger years. And speaking personally, when I was in grade one, I went to speech therapy for part of that school year. I guess I was a stutterer and a stammerer back then. I don't remember the disorder, but I do remember going to the speech therapist and actually having a recording made of my voice on a little plastic recording disc. It was fascinating to a grade one student. On this day in history, in 1851, Herman Melville's classic work, Moby Dick, was published. On this day in 1919, Pierre Elliott, Prime Minister of Canada, was born in Montreal. He died there then in the year 2000 at the age of 80. In 1955, Track and Field magazine named Jesse Owens the all-time track athlete. He had won four gold medalists medals in the 1936 Olympic Games in Berlin, Germany, crushing Adolf Hitler's myth of Aryan supremacy. As a result, Hitler refused to shake his hand, although, as Jesse Owens noted, he wasn't invited to the White House either to shake hands with the president. Uh, Jesse Owens had done his university days at The Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio, uh, my school. He was nicknamed the Buckeye Bullet during his time there. But unfortunately, he, because of his race, never qualified for a scholarship and worked part-time as a gas station attendant and many other things to put his own way through school. Curiously, his, uh, his daughter was a university classmate of mine and was named Homecoming Queen while I was at Ohio State. Another little personal, uh, in the early 1960s, I had the opportunity with friends to attend a father-son church banquet where he was the guest speaker. Jesse Owens died of lung cancer in 1980 at the age of 66. And so we remember today the, the many barriers he, he broke, his, uh, his athletic skill, and the way he encouraged other black athletes to participate in sports in so many ways. On this date in 1961, the movie musical West Side Story was released 
It was an adaptation, of course, of the 1957 Broadway musical. Uh, the movie itself won 10 Oscars, including Best Picture of the Year. Uh, a year ago, my wife and I had the opportunity to see the stage production of West Side Story at Huron County Playhouse up in Grand Bend. Uh, a, a play and, and a movie that remains very popular to this time. So as lots happened on this day of history, but now it's time for us to turn to our evening prayers and especially to remember today, St. Luke the Evangelist. O oh Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm today will be verses from Psalm 149. Hallelujah! Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand. In our psalm prayer, accept our praises, God of justice, defender of the oppressed. Give us grace to join in this your holy work, that all the world may see your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now for our scripture reading, we turn to the gospel according to St. Luke one of the two books that he wrote, along with the Acts of the Apostles, and we read from the very first chapter. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully from the very first to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we do honor St. Luke, one of the four evangelists, that is to say gospel writers. That's what an evangelist is uh, to begin with. Evangel, uh, the word means simply good news, and he is one of four who shared that good news, along with Matthew, Mark, and John. And he has done so in the form of a letter to his friend Theophilus, whom he calls most excellent. Some have suggested that that is, uh, in today's equivalent, calling him the right honorable Theophilus. Certainly one who was to be highly respected and to whom it was important to Luke to send this message. The two books taken together, Luke and Acts, constitute nearly one quarter of the New Testament. And Luke has been very faithful in telling us about the life of Jesus Christ. And he said to Theophilus, he had undertaken an orderly account of doing so, investigating the various sources that were available to him uh, wanting to, to set down as nearly as impossible, uh, nearly as possible, the gospel truth of Jesus Christ. And then he chose to accompany St. Paul on Paul's missionary journey. And so Luke gives us an account of the very beginning, not only of the life of Jesus Christ,
but also of John the Baptist before him, giving us a little sense of the background of Jesus that we might know the one that we worship and understand him. Luke has also given us some of the most beautiful theological pieces that we have, or I should say liturgical pieces of music, including Mary's song of praise called the Magnificat because she did magnify the Lord in her heart and also gave us what is known as a song of Simeon. Uh, Lord, now let us tell thy servant depart in peace, called by us Latin name, the Nuc Dimittis. And also with the song of the angels gave us the glory in excelsis, glory to God in the highest. All beautiful liturgical pieces of music that form a heart of our worship to this day. We, we thank God for people like St. Luke, people who cared to pass the good news on to us. And it reminds us of how important it is for us in our day and age to continue to pass that good news on to other people. The old gospel song, Oh, how I love to tell the story, because some have not heard the story of Jesus and his love. And so I would encourage you to regularly read the Bible in your home, to share the Bible with your children, grandchildren, nieces, and nephews, to regularly take part in church worship, either physically or virtually, as seems best for you in, in these times of, of separation, to hear the word read and proclaimed over and over again. If it weren't for the four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we would not have the story of Jesus in its fullness. And that story means so much to me as I suspect it means so much to you. I think in my heart and in my memory of my Grandma Springer, who read me Bible stories regularly. I still have those warm and wonderful memories of curling up in her arm beside her on her giant overstuffed purple living room chair as she would get out the family Bible that had pressed flowers in it, clippings of births and obituaries from the paper and important stories. A lot of her life was contained in that Bible, including her love of God, and to have her read those stories to me. And then get out Herbert's Bible stories, and I've shown that before, that storybook that was my mother's to begin with, and in which she had writ written her name as an eight-year-old girl. And to think that has stayed in the family, and it's, it's words that I treasure and remember to this day. And I will tell you that some of the important gifts we have given to our grandchildren are Bible storybooks, wanting to keep that tradition going and the joy we have had when we've been able to bring our grandchildren to church with us here or attend church with them in Revelstoke, British Columbia, where they live. Uh, the real joy of passing on and sharing the wonderful word of God. Can you, my friend, be an evangelist, a good new sharer? God gives us that possibility. And today, as we remember those speech and language therapists who work so hard with our children that they can speak and carry the news, I'm thankful for that therapist who worked with me as a six-year-old, that I might be able to speak better. And occasionally to this day, you hear me get tongue-tied. As my father used to say, my, uh, my tongue got in the way of my eye teeth and I couldn't see what I was saying. But it's important that we use the gift of speech that we have been blessed with to share the wonderful good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. We turn again now to our prayers, and we begin with the prayer for St. Luke's Day. Almighty God, 
who inspired the Luke, the physician, to proclaim the love and healing power of your Son, give your church by the grace of the Spirit and the medicine of the gospel the same love and power to heal through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now a prayer for the evening. Maybe. I guess that bookmark is coming out. Come here we go. Yes, we, we are good. We're good. <laughs> Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on doing your will, and that freed from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for a Sunday. Father of light, yours is the morning and yours is the evening. Let Christ, the Son of righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us, even in the darkness of the evening, to that light where you live in radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, so that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you in a moment of silence to offer up your prayers. And now, in whatever language we are most comfortable speaking and in whatever form we desire, we offer the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.